Welcome to the NGIT website and math podcast. My name is Vanessa and today I'll be talking about multiplying radicals with different indexes. Now these are just a few examples of when you're multiplying radicals that don't that don't have the same index or the same base and there's really no way that you would be able to modify the indexes so that you can multiply them across. Let me talk about that using an example. Say we had radical 2 multiplied times the cubed root of 5. See when I mean both the 2 and the 5 are prime numbers you can't really rewrite them so that you have the same base so you're gonna have to try something else so the rule is is that if, when, if that's not the case then if they have if they have the same um, radical root then you can pretty much put them underneath all, everything underneath the same radical. So here, technically, because there's no specified root, then you assume that it's radical two. So here you have a number with a radical two and another um, expression with radical three. So the, it's a kind of the same concept as finding common denominators. So the common denominator or common factor between the two and the three would be six. So now your goal is to get both expressions with the, with the root 6. So if we look at the first one, if, it's, if we naturally have radical 2 here, in order to get radical uh, root, si root 6, we need to multiply this times a root 3, right? Because now we have 6. We repeat what's under here. But in order not to change the value of the expression, because if you just add, if you just multiply times root three, I'm s yeah, root three, then you're you're completely changing the value of the um of the problem. So we need to cancel it out by also incorporating a exponent of three, because then the exponent of three and the um, root three will cancel each other out, but you still get the ra um, root six that you need. So then this turns simply into radical 6, 2 to the third. And you would do the same thing for the other side. Okay, we have a base of 5, and we are naturally have a root of 3 here. And to get the radical, the root 6 that we need, we need to multiply it by 2. But we also need to cancel that out. So we're going to multiply times 2, and then we're going to incorporate a2 as an exponent in order to cancel it out. So then that just brings us down here to radical 6 and then it's 5 squared. So now that they both have the same root, now we can bring them to actually just multiply them together and bring them together underneath one one radical. So it's all going to be under root 6. So now it's 2 to the third and then just multiply times 5 squared. Move down to the next step, then it's just a matter of filling in the inside. 2 to the third is 8. 5 squared is 25. Multiply the two together and that just simply gives you root 6 of 200. And that's as far as we will go in this for this example. You can simplify this further by perhaps taking it taking out a, a a perfect root 6, but that's not completely necessary for this example. So let me do one more example with with this kind of problem. Say if we had radical 3 multiply times the fifth root of Two. Same thing. We've got two prime numbers that we can't, where the indexes can't be changed so that the bases are the same. So we have to adjust the, the roots. So with the root 3, we have an assumed radical 2 here. So our common factor between the 2 and the 5 would be 10. 
So let's start with the first one here. We have a 3 and a, and a natural, and our given root is 2. But we wanted to get it to 10, so we need to multiply times 5. But then we also need to raise the base to the power of 5 to cancel it out. Move on down, that gives us a root 10 of 3 to the 5th. Do the same thing for the other side. We have 2, and then naturally we were given a root 5, but we want to get root 10, so we need to multiply times 2. And then the 2 needs to be raised to also 10 to the 2 to cancel that out. Move on down, the 5 times 2 gives us the root 10 that we need, and then we just simply have 2 squared. So now that we both we have a, ra a root 10 um, for both expressions, we can put them all under one radical. So it'll just be a radical 10, and it's going to be 3 to the 5th times 2 squared. Start simplifying. We have 2 to the 2 squared, which is 4. And then if you don't know 3 to the 5th in your head, you know that 3 times 3 is 9. 9 times 3 is 27. 27 times 3 is 81. And then 81 times 3 is 243. So this is actually 243 times 4. So then if we do that, we get 972. So it's actually the 10th root of 970. 10th root. of 972. And that would be our final answer for this particular problem. So it's all a matter of using the, a least common factor in getting your roots, your, your roots to be the same. Once your roots are the same for each expression, you can bring everything together underneath one radical as long as the original intent is to multiply radicals. So thank you for visiting the NGIT website. If you need any further assistance, please feel free to stop by the CAPE or the Center for Academic and Professional Enrichment, located in Kufrin Hall, room 200. Good luck in your studies.